you know, whatever. I would, I guess what I would suggest is that people would go to their farmer's market or to whatever local food source they have and just find the thing that's freshest and do the most minimal preparation that you can just to, just to savor, you know, what's, what's growing right where you live right at that time and maybe put together that kind of a meal um, is really the, I think, just that's how you get the most amazing food sensations that, that there are. So I, I would say always my favorite food is what's growing, you know, what's fresh and what's just started right then. We're on Bainbridge Island and Sound Food uh, is a project of Sustainable Bainbridge that was started to help people find and connect with local food on Bainbridge Island and in our, our food shed, which is the West Sound area of Puget Sound. Well, I've been, uh, I've been buying locally from farmers since as far back as I can remember. Um, I think it all started, I, I used to live in the Seattle area and I bought food at the Pike Street Market. And um, that was really the beginning of my, that's where I learned more than anywhere else to cook and to love food. And um, there was a one farmer in particular that I remember, um, her name was uh, Pasqualina Verdi. And she was um, an Italian farmer, an Italian woman in her 80s. And she was, she taught me so much about food. Um, I would buy produce from her. This was when I was um, in my early 20s and I would buy produce from her. And she just, she just, she loved her produce and she introduced me to so many things and she like once she pulled out some black kale, which at that time nobody grew black kale. And she said, you've never, you've never bought this. You've never bought this, why? And I said, I don't know what it is. And so she told me, she proceeded to tell me what it was and how to cook it. And I've eaten black kale ever since then, my whole life. And so that just, that really, um, that's just how I learned about food and it just, I learned how much difference it makes to buy, to know who you're buying the food from. Well, Sound Food first grew out of a project of Sustainable Bainbridge, which was to map all of the local food resources. So um, we created these online maps that uh, showed the location of every uh, farm or food producer um, in, on the island and the surrounding area and uh, talked about um, you know, what they grew and uh, it gave information about how to contact them. And also what was really important is it, to it said you know, where you could, it, it showed where you could find their products because most farmers don't sell from their farms, but it would say you know, these products are available at the farmer's market, um, at this you know, local store, through a CSA program, and then it gave all of their contact information. So, because local food isn't, you know, it's the, the, the trick with local food is finding it. Um, I think that there's just a lot of people, you know, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's just not, it's not in the main distribution system. So it's just not that easy to find. And I think that's one of the biggest barriers to the growth of local food is just that it's the distribution system kind of hasn't caught up with the popularity. Uh, we started with the farms and then we've expanded since that time um, to include, we now have a, um, actually we just launched a program called the Island Food Circle, which is really kind of bringing all the information together. So um, the Island Food Circle uh, lists um, we now have on the site just a, a gigantic list of broken down by you know where everywhere you can find eggs and everywhere you can find dairy and and all the restaurants that serve local food um, and then we've uh, we've also added to that now you can go and we've got these island food circle um, decals so all the businesses that buy local food um, can display one of these decals in their door, which, you know, so that lets consumers know 
um, what, what businesses are supporting local farmers. It was just really um, finding a lot of people locally that were kind of had the same passions but had different skills because I, I don't do the programming but um, we were uh, lucky to find a woman who um, actually was, um, I think she just got her PhD in, in online communication and she, she helped us put, we, you know, we got the information about the farms, we had somebody else who went out and, and meticulously detailed all of the information, contact information um, for the local farms. And uh, then she took it and put it into a system that the computer would understand. So she put it and made a, a Google map out of it. And so it's very interactive and easy to use. And um, then we have somebody else who every year goes back and updates it, which is really important because that information changes a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just, uh, you know, kind of reaching out and I don't know, sometimes it just seems like the right person with the right skill set um, showed up at the right time. Uh, we did, we've done several projects since then, all designed to, you know, keep connecting people more and more and making it easier for them to get local food. The first one we did uh, was called the uh, Ferry Farm Stand. And what we did there is we live on an island and um, a large percentage of the people on this island go to work every day in Seattle on a ferry. And um, they come home, you know, they leave in the morning, come back. There's about 2,000 people on each of the big commuter boats every day. And so uh, what we did is we, we worked with the, um, with the city to be able to set, set up a farm stand between the ferries and the buses. And so all these people who were coming off of the ferries in the afternoon and evening went by our farm stand. And we brought in all the fresh local produce and, and uh, set it up right there and put it all in $5 bags so it was easy for them to get and um, just sold as much produce as we could in 10 minute slots as those people were getting off the boat. And it was a really, really good way to introduce people to local food who I think otherwise might not have, have been, you know, have experienced it because they were, you know, busy commuters. Mm -hmm. um, we then took that project, which we did for three years, and decided that, you know, wow, it would be great if we could, if people could get access to that food seven days a week instead of just once a week. So um, we worked with a local retailer, a local feed and nursery store, who just gave us some space in his store and said, sure, you could put you know, a local food stand in this part of the store and run it through our registers. And, you know, and he was really generous at, with doing that. And it turned out to be really an amazing success. Yes, it started with one little tiny, you know, narrow cooler that had all the dairy, it had some cheese and some produce, and um, that was about it. And uh, it turned out that we couldn't keep that, it was so small we couldn't keep it full, that it sold so quickly. So um, since that time, we've now got three enormous coolers um, and a good-sized freezer and a lot of shelf space and so instead of one little corner of the store it's now a whole section of the store that's all from local farms it's got uh, the produce it's got um, local pastured meat it's got dairy um, and a lot of value-added foods there's a lot more value-added foods or processed foods show that are available now so um, the success has been amazing, and it's been good for the farmers, and it's been good for this retailer, um, and it's really good for, you know, just the, con the consumers, people who, who can now get fresh food every day. The Island Food Circle program has been quite successful. Um, the uh, restaurants, I've had several restaurants since we launched it contact me and say, you know, how do I... How do I, how can I be part of this? And I have a list of, 
um, farmers that I've created especially for chefs and so um, I can give them a list and uh, help them you know help them source what they need help them find the farmers that have the products that they need so I mean my my ideal would be that every restaurant on the island would eventually um, be part of the island food circle um, so I think continuing to grow that um, just really can you know expanding the distribution and expanding the um, the knowledge base I think food is a really good you know the reason that sustainable Bainbridge focused on food and decided to start sound food initially was that food is just such a uh, great way to not only connect people and bring them together but it also it really puts you personally in touch with decisions about sustainability you know it's like when you know that farmer or you know who you're buying the food from you're you're making a decision based on you know you there's ways that you can just ask them what they do it's not like going in a store where you have really no idea um, how that company is producing its food. You can ask them directly and you can make decisions, you know, based on your own, um, your own ideas about what sustainability is and what's important. So I think food is just a great uh, focal point for the knowledge of sustainability and kind of bringing that home into a place that really means something to people.